In addition to the two novels we'll be reading this semester, we have several essays that I'll ask you to take a look at. These will be provided online for you to read, and you'll annotate them using the hypothesis system. Each of these is a fairly challenging text, which is why I want us to read them together through the collaborative annotation. However, I'll also introduce each with a short video like this. This is my attempt to provide you with some context, why we're reading this particular text, and how you might think about applying aspects of it to our study of dystopia. None of these articles is about dystopia per se. I don't think any of the ever use that term. Each, though, offers us an insight into what makes something dystopian and does so through a different disciplinary perspective. My advice for these articles is to take your time with them. If you're new to annotating, challenge yourself to making at least one note per page or screen. Annotations can take many forms and serve many purposes. If the author writes a statement that doesn't make sense to you, make a note and ask, what does she mean here? Perhaps one of your classmates will come along and offer an explanation. If the author uses a word you don't know, look it up and copy the definition into a note. The next person to come along who doesn't know that word will appreciate your effort. If you disagree with something the author says, yes, this is possible, make a note with your counterpoint. If the author says something that makes you think of something else, make a note of that. The possibilities are endless as long as you're willing to slow down and put your thoughts and questions into the margins of the text you're reading. We'll start by reading Iris Young's article, Five Faces of Oppression, which first appeared as a chapter in her 1990 book, Justice and the Politics of Difference. Young is a Marxist and a feminist scholar, so her focus is generally on class conflict and gender roles. Although she does often include race in her discussion, I think it's clear that it's not her primary focus. It is, of course, perfectly acceptable to point it out if you feel she's doing this, by the way. Marxist theory argues that the history of civilization is the history of conflict between those who control the means of production, money, machinery, raw materials, etc., and those who provide the labor for that production. Marx called the first group the bourgeoisie and the second group the proletariat. According to Marx, the capitalist system is no better than the feudal system it replaced. In both, those people with the means of production control and exploit those without. Marx believed that eventually the proletariat would overthrow the bourgeoisie and create a worker's paradise, a classless society in which no one owns any property and thus has no power over anyone. Feminist theory has much in common with Marxist theory, but it focuses more attention on the oppression by and the struggle against the patriarchal system that has been the foundation for most of human civilization. According to fe the feminism practiced by a scholar like Jung, the struggle is not around questions of property, but around questions of the female body, how it is exploited and abused by society. All that is to say, Young has a definite angle from which she's exploring the idea of oppression, and to suggest that you should point out to these places when you feel her focus is misplaced, or if her thinking needs to be updated for the 20th century. Young's purpose in this article is to create a framework for evaluating social conditions to determine if they meet the definition of oppression. Ultimately, she'll offer five specific ways oppression can take shape, which she calls the five faces of oppression. In academia, we call this a rubric, a list of clearly defined criteria that we hold up to something we're evaluating. This is an important starting point for our class for two reasons. First, as we'll see, oppression is a key component in defining dystopia, so having an understanding of what oppression means will make it easier for us to develop an understanding of what dystopia means. Second, the project Jung is conducting here, defining and classifying oppression, is a model we can use as a way we attempt to define and classify dystopia. She's given us the framework to follow. Jung's breakdown of oppression also makes it easier for us to apply her ideas. Instead of just asking ourselves, is oppression occurring? We have these more precise faces to consider. For example, let's consider the first face she defines, exploitation. What's an example from a dystopian film or novel where we see the kind of exploitation she describes? Let's think about the Hunger Games series. In that dystopian world, we see the capital exploiting the districts by forcing them to cultivate and surrender raw materials that the capital then uses to provide its citizens with a rather luxurious life. The districts are left to scrape by on very little. That's very clearly an example of exploitation Young described. Young describes it as, quote, a steady process of the transfer of the results of the labor of one social group to the benefit of the other. 
So now we have one way in which the world of Panem in the Hunger Games is dystopian. Now I want to take that example and see if there's something similar in the real world. This is what I call an analog. If we do some research, say through some of the library's databases, we might come across stories about how during these past two years, women were having to leave their jobs much more often than their male counterparts in order to take care of their children during the lockdown and quarantines. Here, for example, is an article from the New York Times from this past May discussing this. Now we can ask ourselves, does this meet the description Jung has given us for exploitation? Is one social group benefiting from the results of the labor of another social group? I'll let you decide that on your own, but I hope this very quick example has given you a sense of the kind of work we'll be doing this semester. I think that will be enough of an introduction for now. Take your time with Young, but notice what a clear and intentional structure she's established for her article. Thanks.